Hey guys, welcome to the first ever Pull Them Up podcast with your host DK and SD bringing it to you today. Uh, two game slate for tomorrow, uh, October 16th. We have two games uh, with the Philadelphia 76ers at the Boston Celtics and OKC at Golden State. For the 76ers, uh, the Celtics are favored by five points, and their over/under is 209. And OKC at Golden State, and Golden State's favored by 12 and a half, with their over/under of being 12, 223. Uh, DK, how are you feeling today, or to- how are you feeling about these games tomorrow? Well, you know, I'm just excited. NBA is finally back. Um, it's my most profitable DFS sport, um, so you know, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, two games played here. Um, you know, I'm only playing GBPs. I don't really think you play cash games here. Um, but, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting slate. Um, I think it all comes down to whether or not Oklahoma City can keep it close to Golden State. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this slate. <clears throat> for, uh, for GPP, do you think you're going to be stacking more of the OKC Golden State game uh, rather than 76ers and the Celtics? It's all a matter of whether you think Oklahoma City can keep it close. If you think Golden State's going to run in there and blow them out, then it makes sense to stack Philly Boston and run back with a couple cheapies from Golden State uh, and then maybe a stud or two. But if you think Oklahoma City is going to keep it close, I definitely think that's the game um, you want to stack just because it's um, over-under is way higher, um, pace of play, stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, we have two questionable injuries with Stephen Adams and Westbrook. Do you think they will play or do you think they'll sit? So, so right now Westbrook is closer to doubtful what I'm seeing. Um, I don't think he's going to play. Um, and we've got Stephen Adams, who just popped up in the injury report. Uh, coming up is questionable with lower back stiffness. Um, if I had to guess, I would say he's going to play. Um, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's take a look at Philadelphia and Boston first. Let's take a look at uh, some of the Philadelphia guys. Um, how do you feel about uh, point guard, let's say, Ben Sevens, Fultz? You know how they how they gonna okay so them. so um <clears throat> so Philadelphia is gonna run out a starting unit of uh, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. Um, I think Sarge, Sarge actually came up in the injury report uh, with lower back soreness as well. Um, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. But right now he's reducted starter along with Markel Fultz, um, who the, the coach said he's gonna start Fultz at the two. And then in the second half, he's going to start J.J. Redick, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then you got Robert Covington will start at the three. Um, so of these five guys here in DK, um, you know, the play that really sticks out to me here is Joel Embiid. Uh, you got Sarge questionable, and then Muscala closer to doubtful. So a lot of these Philly bigs are injured. Um, you know, Horford's not going to be able to stop Joel Embiid. Um, so I'm really liking Embiid here at 8,800. Awesome, awesome. Um Take it over to Boston. Um, Kyrie Irvin. Gordon Hayward's back. How do you feel about Gordon? Gord, yes, Gordon back. 6500 Not a bad price tag here for him. Um, there is news, though, that come out that um, they're going to limit him to 25 minutes uh, for the first two weeks. So uh, with that being said, I don't think you can play Gordon Hayward here. Um, you know, the guys I'm interested in here um, are actually more off the bench. Um, you know, you can't go wrong here with Kyrie. At 7,600, but um, a few of these price tags here in DK are um, looking pretty juicy here. We got Terry Rozier at 4,500 and Marcus Smart at 4,400. Um, you know, we have both these guys come off the bench, but they both produce when they get out there. I project them to get, you know, 20 to 25 minutes here. Um, so, really, uh, of these Boston guys, I'm really liking the cheapies here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was definitely thinking of uh, playing Rozier myself. Uh, and uh, if you guys don't know, we're talking about DraftKings. Uh, we really focus on DraftKings. Uh, we do do a little bit of analysis for FanDuel, uh, but we're really more so focused here for DraftKings only. And, uh, yeah, and one one thing being said, um, for DraftKings, you know, late swap is, is back this year, um, so we had to keep that in mind. And then for FanDuel, they did the they dropping the lowest score with no late swap, so that's interesting. Um, I really like the the late swap more on DraftKings here because I've had so many times last year where. You know, a guy get late, gets late scratch or something, I'm screwed. Uh, so really, I can uh, draft things format here with late swap. Another thing with FanDuel, with this uh, new iteration of the lower score drops, it's going to be a lot of the studs and chuds type play, uh, don't you think? Oh, yeah. So 
Um, so this is a draft your lowest score. Like I said, it's the format. I mean, I've always been kind of a, um, a studs and shuts type guy, but with this format, um, it's more of that um, you're just going to get a guy at a minimum price um, pretty much every day so they can fit in their studs. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Um, do you have any core plays for just this Boston Philly game just to fill in if you wanted to stack this? Yeah, yeah. Golden so State? if you want to stack this game and you want to, um, you know, if you think Golden State, Oklahoma City is going to be blowout, which it definitely could be, um, the players I'm most interested in here are Joel Embiid. Um, and like I said, I like Rozier and Smart. Um, let's see. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna stack this game, you definitely um, can give Kyrie Irving a look at seventy six hundred. Um, the only thing is, uh, Boston likes playing a deep bench. Um, so I think let me look at Boston real quick. Um, so they might run. I'm guessing they're gonna run a ten man rotation here with Kyrie, Gordon. Uh, Al Horford, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown starting with Rozier, Marcus Smart, Marcus Morris, Aaron Baines, and uh, Daniel Tice off the bench. Um, so someone also on Boston, a cheapie, you can look at is Aaron Baines. Like I said, Al Horford's not going to be able to hang with uh, Joel Embiid. So uh, they could um, theoretically start Aaron Baines here just to cover um, Joel Embiid. I definitely think he gets a little more run here because um, they need his uh, defensive ability. Uh, for the defensive ability, don't you think they uh, – because – Al Horford's uh, du dual position availability, playing power mm -hmm. forward or Horford and playing Baines as center is a good move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that. Uh, Al Horford's uh, price tag here at 6100 that's not a bad price tag at all. Um, you know, he should see mid to upper 30s in minutes. Um, and at 6100 we know he gets a lot of blocks and steals. Um, he's been knocking down a lot of threes. So I definitely don't mind playing uh, Al Horford and Aaron Baines together if you think uh, this is the game uh, that you want to stack. Especially having two big men, you know, can stack up and rack up some points, you know. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, just a thought, some cheap go, some cheapo guys. T.J. McConnell, anything, any thoughts on him? Um, yeah, you could give, definitely give T.J. McConnell a look. Um, Only at thirty. So let's, look at, well, let's look at Philly guards here. Um, so. I'm just pulling up. So we know Ben Simmons, um, you know, he's going to see 35 minutes a night. Uh, Mark Fultz and JJ Reddick should split the shooting guard ability, uh, shooting guard role. So I expect both of them to see about 24 minutes. And then you got McConnell um, that's going to see the scrap time of Ben Simmons. And they can also run Ben Simmons um, at the three and let McConnell on the point. So um, I don't think it's out of the question that you see, you know, 15 to 20 minutes out of TJ McConnell. At 3,200, um, uh, you could throw a GPP guard at him for sure. Okay, awesome, awesome. You think that wraps it up really for Philadelphia and Boston? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to move out of that game. Awesome. So next game is OKC at Golden State, and it's at 10.30 at night, so it's the late game. Uh, let's start with some OKC. So we both we already talked about uh, Westbrook and Adams being questionable. Uh, we already have Robertson that's out. Um, how do you feel about uh, OKC? Okay, so we know Westbrook's close to the doubtful. Um, I'd be surprised if he plays. If he plays, obviously great play here. 10-2 um, against Golden State. We know he hates Golden State. So you definitely give a look if he plays. I really don't think he's playing. Um, so that being said, uh, we know where the usage is coming from from OKC. It's going to be Dennis Schroeder. It's going to be Paul George. And it's going to be Steven Adams if he plays. Um, so I'm really liking all three of these guys. Um, I think Oklahoma City can keep this close. Um, I'm praying for that. So I really like uh, using all three of uh, Paul George, Schroeder, and Stephen Adams. Um, other than that, here, um, you know, they're probably they're going to start Pat Patterson, and then the shooting guard um, is kind of a question here. Uh, they could roll out Terrence Ferguson. They could roll out TLC, Abrines, Diallo. Um, you know, we're going to have to kind of do a wait and see approach to see who they're going to start. Um, you know, if they, if they start Diallo, I'd have some interest in him. He's um he's the rookie this year. He's like pretty good in the preseason. Um, yeah, but mainly here it's it's Dennis Schroeder, it's Paul George, and it's Stephen Adams for me. Okay, okay. Let's move on to Golden State. Uh, we have so Golden State. All right. Yeah, we have Cousins already out. Livingston questionable. These those people are kind of the you know. Not on the my list right now, so you know they weren't ever. Mm -hmm. So and Durant, it uh, just was given a rest the last preseason game, uh, so he's got to be fully rested for this 
revenge game, as you'd say. Um, are you mm -hmm. looking more interested in Durant, Curry? You know, Draymond's back as well. So, how do you feel about all these um, these three? Yeah. So, so the top guys here at Golden State, um, you can't go wrong with any of them. Um, you know, Clay Thompson's a discounted price here, fifty nine hundred. But we know who, what he is. He's going to run around screens. He's going to shoot threes. Um, so I don't. I'm not. I don't know about Clay Thompson. Uh, definitely GPP viable. You know, we know he can get hot. Uh, so Draymond Green, he's coming off of um, – he's been resting here a lot in the preseason off an injury. Um, 7,300. Uh, we don't get that three points, blocks, and steals like on FanDuel. Um, so a little – if I were playing uh, drafting as in FanDuel, I'd have a little more interest uh, for Draymond on FanDuel just because he, we know he racks up those blocks and steals. And then like, you can't go wrong with Steph and Durant. I like them both a lot today. Like I said, the highest over-under. Um, and we scroll down here to Valley Plays. Um, someone that uh, I'm very much interested in, I think is basically a lock for me, is, um, where is he? Uh, is, uh, it's Damian Jones. Um, Steve Kerr said he's going to uh, start Damian Jones. Um, so we know he's going to play the kind of that Zaza Pachulia role where, you know, he sees the first seven or eight minutes of the first quarter and the first seven or eight minutes of the third quarter, and then that's about it. Um, but you know, a minimum price here of 3000, uh, should see 15 minutes. Um, I really like Damian Jones. Um, if you want to pivot off of Damian Jones, uh, you can look at Jordan Bell. Um, we know him given the minutes, he can be productive. Uh, I definitely think he should also see about 10 to 15 minutes off the bench. Um, so if you want to pivot the high owned, I definitely think Damian Jones is going to be chalk. Uh, should be like 90% owned. If you want to pivot off him, uh, Jordan Bell is someone that, uh, you could look to, um, but yeah, that's basically uh, what I got here for Golden State. Yeah, before you uh, said uh, Damian Jones, I actually clicked on Jordan Bell because I thought that's what you were going to say. That was my key lock uh, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, previous years that uh, we've been playing DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, Jordan Bell has been, been your man pretty much. So. Oh, yeah. I love Jordan Bell. Um, one given the minutes, you know, he's a, he's a point tournament monster. Um, so definitely GPB viable here at 4100 if you like that pivot. Uh, as of right now, with all this news uh, out tonight for us, uh, do you have uh, a must lock right now? Top guy, call it right now. Um, like a high price guy or just a, any guy? Any guy that's pretty much uh, that's a lock for you. Okay, so lock for me. Um, I said I think Damian Jones um, is it, just too cheap. He's going to see 15 minutes, three thousand. I think he's a lock. Um, and then with OKC here. Um, with Westbrook being pretty much doubtful, I don't see how you don't play Schroeder and Paul George. Um, so I won't say a full lock, but you know, if Westbrook, if Westbrook gets ruled out, I'm playing Paul George and Schroeder no matter what. Um, Steven Adams also someone I'm uh, highly interested in. Uh, if he ends up being out, you can definitely get a look at Nerlens Noel here at 3600. Um, we know he's got that block and steal upside, and he would definitely move into starting lineup here for OKC. So, yeah, locks, I think it's Damian Jones. I think it's Paul George. I think it's Schroeder um, for me. Okay. Uh, do you have any core and value plays, you know, maybe some sleepers that you want to see typically in the, uh, in the GPP? As you said already, Damian Jones. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, um, so let me look team by team here real quick uh, for any sleepers. So Amir Johnson here at 3,100 for Philly. Um, we know Mike Muscala is uh, doubtful and Sarge is questionable. Uh, with that being said, if both those players end up being out, you definitely can consider Amir Johnson here. Also, you got the revenge game narrative going against Boston. So close to minimum price here. Um, we know he's going to get a few blocks, a steal. Um, if he's interested in the starting lineup, I definitely have interest in him. Um, let me see. Let's pull up Boston. Uh, Boston, I said Aaron Baines. Um, like I said, he should get some good run here to guard and bead. Um, Daniel Tice, uh, I don't know if he's going to make the rotation, uh, but if he he would be the 10th man if he does make the rotation. Um, so definitely you can throw a dart at him. Uh, with OKC, it's tough. Um, you, you know, we know the production's coming from Schroeder, Paul George, and Adams. So I guess, you know, Pat Patterson could get hot here at 3,800. Um, Jeremy Grant, he's got the block and steal upside. Um, if we had to pick one of these OKC guys other than George Schroeder and Adams for me, I think it would be Jeremy Grant. 
Um, Raymond Felton, um, if Westbrook's out, would run the back of point guard. Um, we know he can be productive. And that's, if this game turns into a blowout, um, we'll definitely get more minutes. Um, so look at him. And like I said, these cheap shooting guards, I think it's Diallo for me right now. we got to wait for a starting lineup. Obviously, whoever starts uh, is more viable. But I think uh, in GPPs, I definitely like Diallo. And then for Golden State here, um, so if you, if you think it's going to be a blowout, um, you definitely can give Jordan Bell uh, a hard look. Uh, Iguodala, not so much. Um, if it's a blowout, they're not going to run him too much out there. Uh, Kaban Looney, um, you could, someone you can give a look to. Um, and then if Livingston here is questionable, uh, you definitely can give a look at Quinn Cook. Uh, it's been pretty productive here off the bench and in the preseason. Um, so I don't mind that. Um, but yeah, that would be, that's basically it here. Awesome. I think uh, this wraps up for the the first episode today. Uh, if you are interested in looking in more for an actual analysis, a deeper look closer to Locke, you can go check out DK's channel at DKDFS uh, and also follow him at Twitter uh, at DK underscore underscore DFS. Um, and you can follow us together at Put Em Up Podcast on Twitter. If you have any questions, uh, shoot us a DM on Twitter or give us an email at put em up podcast at gmail.com. Uh, DK, do you got any more words to say? Um, you know, I'm just excited. NBA is back. Uh, really excited for DFS. Uh, like I said, guys, it's only two games late, so don't put too much money into this. Uh, GBP only, really. Um, we got the main slate here coming up on Wednesday, so um, that's a slate you, if you want to attack more money, you definitely want to go with the main slate. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, guys, we'll uh, have to see you tomorrow, and uh, good luck.